Well, hello everyone. Um, welcome to another video. And what I decided to do here is something a little bit different. So I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we've got to try different things out in life. Um, now, a friend of mine, Kevin Winter, wanted me to do a game analysis. So uh, this one's for you, Kevin. And what I thought might be useful to you guys is for me to show the process that I go through. Well, I used to, I don't do so much now, but I should do it for every game of chess I have to improve. And the process, this can all be done on a computer, is something you guys, if you're serious about improving at chess, is something that you guys can do as well. Um, I'm going to show you some of the programs I use, um, how I look at my games, and I'm going to take the game, uh, a game at the last English, well, not the English, British league, should I say, for NCL, uh, an important game which I lost. And I'm just going to show you this game, but also go through the process of how to look at this game with the idea that you guys can then take this away and look at your own losses and try to learn from your own losses yourselves, which is one of the most important tools that anyone can use to improve at chess. So first of all, um, I'm going to be using um, chess.com mainly, and they've got this new feature now, uh, which is great, which allows you to analyze your own games um, in chess.com and by using one of the strongest computers stockfish 8 which you don't need anything stronger than that it's completely irrelevant so what do we do well for me most of my games are stored online um that i've played they're put up somewhere so i need to find the game first now there's two ways of doing that if you're really serious about your chess then chess space is a very good program it's very useful to use chess space and um i all the latest games you can get so let me just do whole screen i'm just going to go through like i said the process you can get the latest games from a very good site called the week in chess so if you search the week in chess sorry you can't see the the toolbar there but if you just type in there we go the week in chess and you click on that that will bring up this very good website run by a guy called mark crofer a very nice guy and you know he does this for free and then you can probably see around here where my mouse is they have twic downloads you click on that and then if i scroll down you can see all this here where it says twic date blah 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 and if you just click on the format you want cbf pgn cbv that will save all the games from the period of the date you see there and if you download all these there's a lot of them to download you can buy it all for 20 pounds off mark which i suggest you do um you have um all the games have been played pretty much ever everything you need latest games now i um open it up in chess space normally um, um but you don't need to do that as long as you can locate the game you want to look at and there's another way of doing that i'll show you now and that is if you basically in the search bar in google you just type the name of the game and you go to a website called chess games and then you can download the pgn by then but eventually what happens is you get the pgn and here in um in basically you can see i've got the whole screen open um in chess.com there's a there's a thing on the left you can see this hopefully i'm scrolling on the left here and you can see something here where is it i think it's learn so you go to learn you click on analysis and that will open up the board here in front of you and then it says um enter pgn so that is whatever pgn maybe your own pgn which you, you can store yourself and what i've done here i've opened the pgn of my game against roman edward and that's what we're going to look at so it's a very simple way basically of getting a game into chess.com that you can analyze with a computer and also now i'm going to show you how you should analyze your game so i don't computer is useful but it's not the be all and end all as i've said many times before you need to think verbally how to improve um so there's just some quick tips to get your game in and um, another thing i will do i'm going to show you how i use chess base as we go along at key moments i haven't looked at this game yet so i'm going to work through it uh, with you now let me just tell you about my opponent uh, first of all my opponent is this chap here very nice guy from france elo 2628 and the game in question um was played in the last round of like say the foreign cl chess league and i was black i lost the game but i should have won as we're going to see um, before we go into that game, one more announcement I wanted to make. Um, I, there is going to be a stream tonight, 
7 p.m. That should say British summertime rather than GMT. Uh, mistake on my part I've just seen and uh, I should have changed that. There we go. Look at that. I'm changing it now off the cuff. And that is 11 a.m. PDT, and that's going to be on my Ginger GM Twitch channel. So come and join in there. I'm going to be doing a long play game. Maybe you'll get an opportunity to play against me if, if you're around. Okay, but let's go on to the game in question. That uh, is why we're here, really. Now, my opponent um, started with Knight to F3. I'm going to talk through what I was thinking. And I was going to play the Dutch. But one variation I know I, I, I need to do some work on, which everyone seems to be playing against me, is that after f5, this tricky little move order allows white to play d3. Now, I think black is absolutely fine here, but I, don't, I didn't know the theory. I've been a bit lazy on my own game recently with all the other stuff I've been doing, and I, I've slacked off. And if you're going to play the Dutch, I would say this is a move you certainly need to be um, aware of. Um, you can see I've got a computer assessment above me as well drawing this. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's going to at least to show the assessment as we go through the game of what Stockfish thinks. Now here, I think the best line here, if you do play this, is knight to c6, e4, e5. And, and you get some uh, interesting position here, but this is theoretically okay for black. But I didn't want to play this because I, I wasn't aware of the theory, the current theory. So after knight to f3, I thought, okay, well, I'm quite happy to go into a Dutch, but I, I maybe will try to play a system where I can try to get my pawns on these three squares. This is, this is the kind of perfect pawn setup for the Dutch I enjoy playing. If you saw my last video, you you understand why my last stream. So I played d6 with the idea of avoiding the theoretical lines with d3. And maybe going e5 next and then trying to go f5. So I'm just trying to do a crafty little move order here. Um, now, if my opponent had played d4, I would have probably played f5 here. And I'm kind of back into the Dutch I know. So this would mean quite happy. Um, and I also have options of going into a perk, King's Indian kind of setup as well. But my opponent decided now to go e4. And here he's he's now transferred into a one e4 opening and I have a couple of options here. Well, I could go into a perk, a tiger's modern, which I've been having great score with recently with g6. And I think this would have been a very good option because by playing knight to f3, my opponent has cut out probably the most scariest line against tiger's modern. And that is a line where white plays an early f4. For example, uh, if we go back. If you go e4, let's say g6, d4, d6. In my opinion, one of the most scary lines in this is where white plays f4, the so-called Austrian attack. And in the move order employed in the game, um, I could easily have gone g6 and I would have had a bet. I would have stopped this option. But you know what? I decided I want to play something a bit different today, and I decided to go for a Sicilian. But I was also thinking, well, if I play um, c5 first in this position, my opponent I saw beforehand, and this is what I did. I did about an hour's work before the game, and I saw my opponent plays a lot of bishop b5 Czech Sicilians. And I'm OK playing against this. But again, I didn't want to do this as quite a boring reputation. And I thought he'd be prepared for this. I'm trying to dodge his preparation. Now, let me just show this is something if you have chess base and you don't need to do this. This is really for competitive, much higher ranked players. Chess base is quite expensive. It costs about 200 pounds. Um, it's a database that you can use for a number of things. Now, I will show you what I do. because That's why I said I'm going to go through the whole process of me preparing for this game um, in chess base. Well, um, it's this program here. I'm just opening up a couple of screens. You can see I've got, okay, let me just, uh, okay, I need to go for the whole screen. Um, is that opening up? Oh, you can't see it, unfortunately. That's a bit strange. Um, okay, well, obviously the computer doesn't want me to show you chess space, but it basically, you don't need to see it. It's a program which has a large database of um, games. And what you can do in that, which is very useful, and I use it mainly for two things. You can do this for free on the inter on if you search on chess games is quite a good site. Um, if you don't want to spend the money, but if you know you're playing a certain player, you can even just search their name chess in Google, and it will come up with some of their their games. But in chess space, I do the same. I put their name into a search feature. It will search through something like I don't know 10 million games. It will come up for all the games they play. 
only look at their white games when I'm black to save time. And I try to see what they like playing in the opening. And if I realize what they like playing like this, I try to avoid it. I don't want to do something they enjoy playing. So I want to win the, the war. I want to win the opening war. I want to play something that they're not so comfortable with. So that is why after the move E4, I decided to play this knight to f6 move first. Now, why did I do this? Because now my opponent has to defend this one, knight to c3. And here I could go for a black line, but I really wanted to get Sicilian today. And when I play c5 now, this move bishop b5 check loses a lot of its um, a lot of its power. Why is that, you might be asking? Because the knight on c3 is actually very misplaced here. I mean, I can do a number of lines, but what white generally does after c5, bishop b5 check, later on, white wants to play c3 and d4, building up a strong pawn center. And if I take on d4, being able to take back the pawn. So keeping two pawns in the center. So that's something I, I you know, again, I'm trying to win this little war. And I knew that after playing c5, my opponent wouldn't go bishop b5 check here because I'd be totally fine. He went d4, and now I uh, took on d4. And here he didn't go for the main line Sicilian, but probably because I've tricked him a little bit, he went for queen takes d4. Again, he's trying to win the psychological war here, and he has because my theory is not so well developed in this. Um, I remembered some ideas, and that's the most important thing when you're playing chess because you will get tricked in the opening and you won't know the as precise moves you're supposed to be playing. So what should you do there? Well, you should think logically and try to remember games, ideas in that kind of setup you've seen before by top players. And again, that's something you can do. For example, what I would do now um, on this position, you can't see check me using chess space. What I do, I put this position into chess space. And again, one of the powerful things of chess space is the search function. It will search either the name of an opponent, it will search the position that you put. What I'm going to do, well, I'm, you can't see it, so I won't do it now. I put this position into chess space because it has a large database of games. And then I would search all the games in this position. And then when I've got my search results, I would um, clarify it. So I look at the top rated players with black. So you can then refine that search even more in this position. And I basically then have all the top players ELO rated who have played this position as black. What I would do then, I'd probably look at their five of their games, the top players, so all 27, 2800 players, and I'd get an idea of what they have played in this position as black, what plans they do, what they do, what they're trying to get. I go through to the middle game. So then if I ever have this position again, I know what Kasparov or Magnus Carlsen have played in this position. And hopefully I'd remember to put those plans into operation. So therefore, you know, by doing this time and time again over the years, you will basically your openings will be super good because you'll be playing like the top players because you'll be copying their plans. So that's a very powerful thing. Again, I'm sure you can do this for free online. I'm not sure exactly how, but it's good. Another thing I do is look at some of the modern games because remember theory does change. You can search it by date, this position. Again, do an ELO rated. There's no point looking at the games of 1200 players because you're probably not going to learn much from them. Um, another good website is a website called Chess Publishing. I think it's quite cheap to subscribe to this. This gives you all the latest theory um, in uh, basically every month. It has all the latest games in every opening. You can save their PGNs there. Very good, very good uh, website, Chess Publishing. So all these things I use basically, you know, when I'm going for a serious game. Let's move on to the game now. So I, I could remember a game I played maybe 10 years ago against Lawrence Trent where I went for the setup here. Now, the whole point of White's idea is he gives up the bishop and he tries to keep his space. He pins my knight. I break the pin. My opponent takes on c6. Now, taking with a pawn, I've tried, but it's very slow. Positionally speaking, I'd want to take with a pawn because I have a very nice center here, but my development is too far behind. And this position is not good. I need to, I need to move my bishop here because this at least puts my bishop on a more active squ square here. My opponent now played the main line, bishop g5. White is up in development. This is very normal for the Sicilian, uh, but structurally and positionally, I'm doing okay. 
Later on, I got the two bishops. And the one thing with a Sicilian is I have an extra central pawn. And this is this is quite good, you know, because later on in the ending, it's good to have more central pawns from you, than your opponent. The center is the most important part of the board. If I reach an ending, my structure, my pawn structure or a middle game will be better than my opponent's. So I here for now played e6 because I've got to get my last piece developed. Uh, my opponent played the main line, castles queenside. And basically, I could remember this position as the starting point for this variation. And one thing I could also remember is that some of my plans, and this is key because I've looked at this position in the past. I have quite a good me memory for chess things, even though the last time I had this was 10 years ago. I can remember that game against Lawrence. And I remember some of the key ideas. So I knew some of the key ideas here was b5, start an attack over here try to get my pawns rolling this is a minority pawn attack so this is a key move it's also a good idea to move my queen off this die off this file so either queen a5 or queen c7 both of these squares are good for the queen and really that's that's the main ideas i'm going for but you also need to know what your opponent's trying to play because you've got to stop his plans now you've got to watch out for bishop takes knight when d6 is weak that's one thing I know I've always got to be aware of. I've also got to be aware, not of that move, that would be a very nice surprise, of my opponent playing e5. And this is why your queen probably wants to move off this file when it opens up. Um, I've also got to be aware of my opponent moving his queen, going knight d4, and then going f4, f5. I've fallen for that maybe 15 years ago, and I've got a very bad position. The good way of meeting that, because that takes a long time for white to do, is by starting attack on the kick on the queen side. So I knew all these plans, but I didn't know the precise theory. Now, my opponent played queen e3 here, and at this point, I was pretty sure this was a very uncommon move. Now... I fought for quite a long time here. I have to say, excuse was, I had a very, very bad cold during this game. and I, I, I didn't use time management very well. We'll talk about that a bit later on. But one thing I did here, I fought for a long time on the obvious move. I think it's obvious because it attacks the queen, knight g4. But I didn't, I thought maybe my opponent had prepared this. And I fought again psychologically. My opponent, thinking about me, knows that I'm the kind of player who likes playing these sharp moves and entering into forced sequences. And I thought, well, he's played queen e3, maybe for this reason, maybe to tempt me into this. And I didn't want to get tricked, even though my calculations, I come to the conclusion, and I haven't checked this yet, so we'll find out that knight g4 was okay. Let's just have a look now then. So knight g4, um, I now really had to consider two moves, either queen moving to keep an eye on f2, or bishop takes e7 and again during the course of a game you look at one of these to start with and then you move on to the next one process of elimination so first of all i looked at bishop takes e7 and it was easy to see that after playing uh, knight takes e3 bishop takes d8 knight takes d1 i'd be probably winning in this position as you can see from the computer's assessment as well i'm going to be material up so therefore i eliminate i, I just got to this position quite simple to calculate and before playing knight to g4, I'd eliminated, therefore, the possibility of my opponent taking here. So then he has to move his queen and he has to keep an eye on his pawn and on his bishop. So I thought this was uh, basically a, a key position. And I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I wanted my knight here or not. I mean, now the move I wanted to play to make sense of this knight move was knight e5. I wanted to play this move and this move I actually thought was probably okay to me. Now we're going to find out if I'm right or wrong. Now, of course, my opponent can win a pawn. The computer thinks it's a clear pawn. Um, I mean, if he takes on e5, this is quite nice for me in actual fact. I think black is better here because my pawns in the center, even though they're doubled, having double pawns in the center is often a good thing because they control so many squares. And I think this is a good position for me. I'm quite happy here. So the line I was calculating was bishop takes e7, and now I was looking at uh, knight takes f3, and again I'd worked out if he goes bishop takes queen, I'm okay, I go knight takes queen, key is pawn takes knight, queen takes d6, uh, so, oh, sorry, e7, and now queen takes d6 is kind of key, and I was looking at this position here, I know white's won a pawn, 
but I wasn't convinced. After something like king e7, let's say rook d1, I thought I might have the move g5 here. And I thought I had pretty decent compensation for a pawn in this ending because my king can try to come into e5, maybe to f4. My opponent's pawns are very weak over here, so I might be able to do a rook lift, bring a rook around. This is a very normal idea. And also, more importantly, I wasn't sure what my opponent was doing here. Um, he hasn't got an easy plan. Maybe I've even got little tactics with bishop to d5. So, uh, but, so I saw up to this point, the computer thinks white's better. I'm not so convinced. But then I decided, well, my opponent kind of likes, you know, I think he might like this. What might be more uncomfortable for my opponent is to keep things tactical and also more in my style of play is keeping the queens on. So I therefore decided, well, keeping to the ideas earlier, my opponent's threatening e5 now, I've got to move my queen. And queen a5 seemed like a very good square because I've moved my queen, e5 is not anything I have to worry about. My queen is on aggressive square, it's looking at his bishop, and I maybe now have knight g4 ideas. So I was very happy to play this simple move. So far, so good. My opponent played king b1, and now, well, I castled. We got a castle. It's worth noting that if white ever decides to take on f6 here, I would probably take with the bishop and sacrifice this pawn. Um, he can take here. This is this is something I, I was considering, but I just go bishop takes c3. And if he takes with the queen, I'm going to win back the pawn on e4. And I have a very nice position because he's damaged his pawns. And if he takes with the pawn, ugh, he may be a pawn up, but his king is completely naked now. And it, it, he's probably in serious trouble here. So um, I castled. My opponent now played queen d2, and it was around here that I realised, come on, my opponent can't be playing the best moves here, because he's moved his queen to e3 and d2, and what, I've, what have I done? I've played some useful moves, I've put my queen on a good square and I've castled, so I was getting more confident here. But when your opponent plays a move, what's the first thing you should always do? You should always look what their attention is. What is their intention? And b5 would be a major blunder here. And Stockfish will tell us why, because I'm losing to a very common trick, knight to d5. And this is a very, very common trick when the king's moved to b1 that you need to watch out for. And I'll let you guys pause that if you want to and work out what's happening here, but I'm probably losing. So I wanted to put my queen on somewhere a bit more active. I decided to go queen a6 because that's going to support b5, b4. And now my opponent put a rook in the center and I start my attack. So things are going very well for me here. Queen d3, he's moving his queen again. Stop trying to stop me, go b4. But the only thing I need to do is move my queen. Where's my queen going to be best placed? Well, queen to b7. Because here I can now move my pawn and you can see I've got also pressure against e4. So again, I think I'm, I'm on my opponent's place some small inaccuracies. I'm taking the initiative. Um, knight d4 did come. He wants to play f4, f5, but this is going to take a lot of time. And I decided in this position to um, basically get a rook to a better square. And um, I just played rook on f to c8 because if my opponent now ever takes on c6, which was clearly one of his ideas, I can always take with a rook. I don't want to take with my queen. I want to have the chance to double rooks. And here, if he ever takes on b5, let's say queen takes b5, rook b6 is, is one move that's going to give me a, a very sizable attack here. Um, I'm generally not worried about losing a pawn on the queen side because that will just open up lines towards my opponent's king. After all, it's opposite side castling, so the attack is more important here. Um, so my opponent did take on c6 uh, anyway, um, but now he played knight to e2. It's clear to see he's trying to get this knight into the center. Now, maybe I had some tactical resources here, but I was already draining too much time. And I thought, very sensibly, let's keep things simple. And I played just rook to c8, doubling up on the half open file. Knight d4, rook c5, attacking his bishop. Uh, my opponent moved his bishop. 
and now I just continued b4 and everything's going very easily um I just want to go a5 a4 and then either b3 or a3 and this is a standard idea in these Sicilian positions to 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 get an attack against my opponent's king I'm clearly got the initiative I may also I'm also dreaming of rook to c3 tactics and um, that doesn't quite work let's say rook e2 was played rook c3 would be a lovely move to play if it worked but after pawn takes pawn takes my opponent has knight b3 spoil sport stopping stopping the attack so it, it's a bit premature um but instead i now came up with an interesting idea because i i figured what's my opponent trying to do here and again this is such a key thing you don't just think of your own ideas think of your opponent's ideas as well and the thing that i realized he's trying to do well he's trying to overprotect c2 so he can move his knight if I play the natural move a5, which is my first fault, and this is what I want to play, I thought he might be able to go knight b3. And this was the move that was uh, off-putting to me because, um, I mean, maybe I'm still better, but I, I kind of allowed him to do what he wants. I want to keep my rooks on the c file, ideally, or force a bit of a weakness. I mean, maybe I can still do this, but I didn't like this move. So I fought for a long time here. And I, I thought at the time I came up with a clever idea because I, I played the rather bizarre rook h5. Now, the point of this is I want to push his bishop away because I think his bishop is a bad piece. Uh, sorry, a, a, a good piece, actually, at the moment. I wanted to push it to g3. And also I wanted to play a5, but not get hit by knight b3. Maybe I could have done it straight away. So I think this is okay. My opponent played bishop g3. Maybe he should have taken on f6, but that looked horrible for him because my bishop becomes very strong. And now I just play my plan a5. And what I'm trying to do is improve my position and stop my opponent's ideas. Improve and stop. Improve and stop. Stop him, improve me. Stop him, improve me. This is something you've got to continuously do drawing your games to chess. Very happy here. My opponent now played f4. He's got to try something like this. And now that his bishop has moved away, um, I've got to think what his next idea is. Well, my opponent's next idea in this position is to play f5. And if he does play f5, I always, I think, want to go e5 to, you know, keep my king blocked. But I didn't want my rook to be stuck over here now. It seemed like it's done its job here. Now, the computer is saying... I've got moves like d5 in this position. Maybe d5 is a good idea. This is actually a very standard move. And this is another reason when using computers can be useful. You can you can see that the computer sees an idea that you might not have spotted. But then don't only look at the one move it's suggesting. Don't keep tapping away at the thing because you won't learn anything. What you need to do is say, well, why, why is the computer suggesting d5? Is that a good move? Is it not? Don't always trust the computer, but ask yourself why? And I can see the reason why here and try to explain it verbally to yourself. So in future, you'll know verbally it's easier to learn that way than trying to think any other way. And here, I think it's clear to see that this is trying to get my knight into the game, either into e4 or d4, d5, excuse me, and then maybe into c3 later on. And the more I look at this, the more I'm agreeing with the computer. This typical idea, d5, would liberate my pieces. Let's say he did take there. Well, I could take with a rook is one idea, but maybe knight takes is even better because now this one's coming. I don't know. Maybe rook takes. Let's go rook takes. My rook's nice and centralized, got a pin. And that exchange of pawns means my opponent's lost a lot of his potential because he had two pawns there. He's only got one now, so I take away a lot of his play. So I've got to remember now. So what I'm thinking now is in future, I've always got to remember when I have a bit of control, if my opponent ever plays f4, getting these two pawns here, remember about the d5 break. So that's a middle game strategy I'm going to remember and take away from this game here. Okay, instead I played rook back to c5. I think this is also good because it's a slower plan, but it's a very strong plan. My opponent played knight b3, and now I played rook b5. My opponent played knight d4. He offered a draw around here, but of course, even though he's a very strong player and much higher rated than me I, i'm not going to take it because i'm better and now i just go rook b6 and this this is one of the ideas that i i i sort of was trying to play by this weird rook maneuver and i just want to keep pushing these pawns my opponent played bishop h4 and now i played a4 
and getting ready to open his king up. F5 was played and now I can keep things closed with E5. Uh, my opponent took on F6, otherwise there might be some tactic where my knight comes in here. And now he played knight F3. And here I'm getting very short of time. My time management was very bad. Now, what you should do when you're playing in a tournament, in this tournament, for example, I, it's 40 moves until the first time control. What you should do when you're playing in a tournament, because you have different time controls, but generally time controls are universal, is think about how much time you have per move on average. Work out the mean calculation of your, your average time to spend on each move. And in this, I worked out that it's 40 moves with increment in about two hours. So if you divide uh, 120, hopefully I've got this right, 120 by 40. Yes, I have got that right. Obviously that divides it three times into that 40, 80, 120. So that gives me three. So that means on average, I got three minutes per move. Now that means that I've got to, you know, I've got to use that time. I don't want to get really short time, which I did here and that cost me the game. What I should have done was play some of the more natural moves a lot quicker earlier on. Because I, the opening, I was thinking a bit too much. I shouldn't have spent so much time on the natural moves. Play natural moves quickly and use your time at critical moments. As, as we're going to see here, as soon as the game got to the critical moment, I had seconds and I blundered. Wah, wah, wah. So um, let's have a look. Well, OK, I put my rook back here attacking this. My opponent now um, sat there and here I, I think he's going to try to play. His one plan is this. Again, I'm thinking about his plans. Remember what I'm doing. I'm stopping him improving and stopping improving. So here, maybe I should even play. I think I played the wrong move, but you know how much I love Harry. I love you, Harry. Look at this picture someone made. I think this is a fantastic picture. And thank you so much for this picture. Oh, God, I've forgotten the name now. Oh, no. I'll, I'll tell you the name of this. But look at that. A fantastic picture there. And it's not a game of chess without Harry, is it, dear boy? And here, well, I think I should have played h6. But instead, I played h5. I don't think this is a terrible move. Because I want to stop my opponent's plan over here. So I'm stopping him. And now I can get ready to do my own plan. My king has an escape square. My opponent played a very good move now. H4. And he's using Harry against me. His knight wants to come into G5. And that's a good square for his knight. So I've got to now play with some urgency. Rook C4. Attacking E4. A nice central pawn I'd like to take. If I can get rid of the E4 pawn. I might be able to move my pawn and open up my bishop. So my opponent now went passive and here I played the best move. It's time to attack. I can't waste any more time. All my pieces I've got to the best squares. I've got to break with one of these two moves. Now, if I go A3, he can go B3. And that means he, he blocks it, things down there. And the only way I'm going to checkmate him now is to get my queen into B2. And I think that's more of a, more of a fairy tale than anything else. So that's not the right pawn break. I want to open things up even if it costs me a pawn so i played b3 ripping his king apart even if it opens even it cost me one pawn my opponent took on b3 and now he played pawn takes b3 and here well i played the best move one thing i was aware of is that i don't want to allow my opponent to swap off pieces because the more pieces he swaps off the more he'll be able to defend i've got domination of the c file so if i played a rather natural looking rook b4 I thought, well, I don't like this because now I lose the C file. My opponent can play rook C2. I wasn't even looking at him taking on, on D6. I didn't need to. I was just looking at this kind of thing. And the computer saying tactically I'm probably still okay here. But let's think, you know, in, in principles, and this is more important, in principles, I'm attacking. I've sacked a pawn. I want to keep pieces on the board. So I now played, I think, a very clever move and a move I'm still pretty convinced is the best move rook to c5 this keeps control here i've got ideas now of going queen c c6 and rook rook to c1 with a checkmate attack i've also got other ideas which i saw of going d5 a very clever move and then e4 and again this is a very thematic sacrifice that i've seen in a number of games and even it's a double pawn sacrifice but my bishop can then join in the attack so um things are looking very good but i was desperately short of time my opponent played rook to d1, and now he's clearly trying to defend um, against my something coming to c1. And he's also, again, trying to swap off 
by playing rook to c1 next but here i was so short of time you can see i'm plus two pretty much here i played very well i played d5 i had played this instantly um why did i play this because my bishop is now coming into the game my opponent took on d5 and here this is where it all went wrong i played a really good game up to this point everything thematic in a sicilian and here i i just because i hadn't used my time well i got my move order wrong and given give, give me another minute here on the clock another two minutes i would have played the right move here and the right move which i saw basically i had two moves now if i had more time i'd have looked at them one by one the move i played in the game e4 looked very natural because i'm opening up my bishop and I, even though it's costing me material all my pieces are pointing at his king but what i should have seen is that i don't have a good continuation we'll come back to the game in a minute and what happened but i didn't have enough time to calculate the other move i was looking at was rook to c3 here and we'll see i actually played this in a minute but i just didn't play it in the right way and if i had had more time i'd have calculated the other line wasn't so good then i would have calculated this line and i think it's clear to see that this line is pretty much game over if he takes on c3 my queen comes into b3 with check king a1 rook a8 checkmate king c1 and i take here and this is forcing of course i have at least a draw but now i play e4 and i'm threatening checkmate and his knight so that is clearly well it's plus eight plus nine going up plus 11 plus 100 so he can't do that and if i played rook c3 then he has to move his queen so rook c3 something like queen d2 but now i have a lot of tempting moves here and i think just taking on b3 either with the queen or with the rook just wins the game easily let's say i take with a rook because now i've got ideas of rook b8 and e4 and there's no way he's going to be able to stop me checkmating him on b2 and it's actually quite a simple line this one and the reason this works much better is i i the threat is stronger than the execution the threat of me playing e4 is better than me playing it i had the right idea i got it the wrong way around and the reason for that is in the game well there's nothing he can do here i think we can see see that with the computer's assessment in the game let's go back i played e4 first and the problem with this is i've now allowed him the d4 square for his knight he played rook takes d4 and now i play rook c3 with the same idea we've seen he played queen e2 and with one second left i played my next move I played a bad move I, I gave up the game and I mean uh, really uh, it's silly because I went against my instinct I should have gone now rook takes rook takes b3 and had I played this who knows I'm probably still better here we're on move 37 if I reach the time trial I may still win this game because I'm only a pawn down but look I've got the attack and that's the most important thing I was a bit worried about knight e5 here <coughs> and or even uh, knight d4 and it's impossible to work all these lines out with little time but had i kept pawn on e5 this would have been a lot less scary and uh, the computer can work these out for a free human you need time it's as simple as that instead of playing this natural move i play queen takes b3 forgetting about my opponent's next reply i wanted to set up rook to c2 and queen takes um b2 checkmate and um i was looking at a number of lines here but i didn't have any time i thought this was strong but now my opponent plays very well and he gets his attacking first knight to g5 and he has the first threat rookie eight check and well maybe i should have uh found a better solution here but again i've lost i've lost the plot a little bit here rook c2 for example it's checkmate only one move away but that's that's enough in chess i played queen b8 again i blame it on the clock here blame it on myself for using such black bad clock management my opponent now just goes rookie one renewing the threat of this and after i took on g5 i played king f8 this is move 40 but i realized my position is hopeless and i i i, I, I simply resigned before playing any more moves plus 50 wow that's why i don't always use computers to to analyze with 
but sometimes it's interesting but then another thing you should do so i've used the computer here what you should do if you're doing this yourself with your own games maybe note down moments where the computer's assessment changed or maybe note down moments where during the game you thought were critical so without the computer then go back to those moments and think where you made the mistakes what you can do in future don't make the same mistake twice so here i'm not going to use the computer now i'm doing this off the top of my head the opening went fine but I think things started to go um, a little bit wrong with my time management. And also we, we saw that in this moment here, I was too eager to stick with my plan. So I'm thinking maybe I was a bit too dogmatic. I had one plan of playing Rook C5 and attacking over here, which was okay. But maybe I've got to just be a little bit more undogmatic in future and, and widen my horizon of possibilities. And now I know that as soon as f4 is played, can you remember the lesson I've taken away here? Uh, d5 is one move I certainly won't forget in future. So I know that I have this break in future when I have control of the center. So that's something I'm going to remember. Uh, good, good. I, so I'm going to learn that. And then later on, it was just calculation. I'm, I'm going to remember not to get that short of time, play some of my more obvious moves earlier on a lot quicker. But all in all, it was an interesting game. And we can see how I use the computer's assessment, chess.com. If you remember, you can do this yourself with your own games. Don't rely on it 100%. Think for yourself. It's really a tool to jog you, to jog you to look at certain areas of the game, to think for yourself at the right areas. If you're struggling to understand where you went wrong, the computer can jog you at certain points. But literally, once it's suggested a move, turn it off. Think for yourself. Um, and remember, these other things you can use, like uh, chess publishing is good for latest theory. Uh, um, there might be stuff I've forgotten. This is what I do. I use chess base. I've got a laptop. I take it to tournaments. I search my opponent before the game. If I was less lazy, I would do this after the game. So I always prove my openings. When you go away from a serious game, you must do this with your every single game you play. Because then if you get the same thing again, and you will do if you keep playing, you'll play it a lot better. You know the plans a lot better. So this is really one of the, the basic things you can all do at home to become a better chess player. Look at the games, especially the games you've lost, especially the games where you went wrong. Locate where you did your mistakes. Look at the latest theory by having a look in the opening. You want to be up to date with a the theory, but also remember the ideas in the middle game. If you do that, you're bound to, to become uh, a stronger player. Well, that went on for a bit longer than I thought, um, me wabbling on there. And I, I know this won't be for everyone, but, uh, you know, um, I, I do like trying different things out. I'm going to be playing a long play game later on in the stream anyway, so we'll, we'll have that up and um you know i think it's i, I want to share with you some of the things that i do and share with you some of the things that have helped me become a grandmaster and share with you basically things that can help you um other things i'm doing quite exciting at the moment i'm doing a big course for ihs 17 hour course which is the biggest thing i've ever done biggest project where i'm going to really try to you know it's going to be i think the best course i've ever done it's going to be on how you guys can basically get better at chess with little time if you have little time how to improve at chess this is what i'm going to do this course on keep an eye out for that i need to finish that as well um but remember also this stream later on is um at uh, 7 p.m british summer time so i got that wrong and tune into my twitch channel um to to uh, basically check check that out so that's twitch.tv ginger gm if you see this in time and uh well that's all i wanted to say for now and thank you for for watching some incredible powerful tools out there uh, in the internet age which you can use to help yourself improve your game you know use computers as your friend and not your foe don't get too carried away with them but you use them correctly and they can help you improve cheers and hopefully i'll see you later for the stream goodbye